I was saying that we should have this on record mm -hmm. that you would see in your textbook, the unit five, that there is a distinction between empirical generalization and the normative generalization or empirical laws versus normative laws. And there it was obvious, eh? the emphasis was to show you the distinction between law uh, statements that are like laws, law like, though they don't really do what laws do. Because if it is a typical law, I'm referring to the empirical generalization, then it shouldn't admit of exceptions. But then we learned that empirical laws would rather change or be reviewed if there is a counterfactual, if there is an opposite to the fact occurrence. That law will be changed to accommodate the counterfactual. We learned that in Unit 5. And we contrasted that kind of law or law-like statement with what? The normative, where you must obey the law regardless. So all the other types of laws, the constitutional, statutory, moral, gal laws, what have you, uh, uh, mathematical, divine codes, they were all placed under normative laws and then described as what the, the type of law that is prescriptive, that instructs on what should be done, what must be done. So it has to be obeyed because that is how, you know, the, the, the system of the system in question. So if it's math, if it's logic, if it's the, the state, what have you, the system prescribes that that is how things should be done or must be done. I contrasted that, as I said earlier, with what empirical law. Now, it, so it gets a bit confusing for some of you, shouldn't, but it gets confusing for some of you when you get to that last slide, last slide there, which, which says what? So let me take you to that page. And if you have your test, you can look at it. You can look. Page 120, activity 1.5. Look at the, the topic there. It says identifying two different types of normative statements. And then those two different types of normative statements are described as one law like hypothesis versus theoretical definitions. And then folks now say, ah, but how can law like hypothesis be a type of normative statement? So I got one or two uh, student questions on that because they, they think that if it's a normative statement, then it should not be a law like. State hypothesis or whatever. I don't give it. I think it's a, a language issue. Now you see that if you engage the content properly, then you don't have to have that con confusion. Because if I'm stating it as a description of facts that I've observed in the past, then I've gathered it into a law. So a, a typical example in the past, when Aya got pre pregnant, she delivered in nine months. I drew two got pregnant, she delivered in nine months. This morning, I drew two got pregnant and she delivered, this is her ninth month. So I want to conclude that then all women deliver in nine months when they get pregnant. That's a description of what is supposedly the case, okay? So it's an empirical generalization, generalizing about what I observed empirically. And so it will fall within a law-like hypothesis, which is what empirical in nature. But we could have a law-like hypothesis. Now there comes the seeming confusion that is not a confusion at all. So I'm, I'm putting it on record for your revision. Okay. Law-like hypothesis that may not necessarily be describing, but rather would be prescribing. Uh, would be prescribing. So if I say a metal must expand when heated, for example, I am not describing. The language is not a description. It is a prescription saying that if it is a metal, then it must have these qualities. It must expand when heated. So now, a, a, a normative statement. So we'll get that contrast and then we should do fine. I see Vivian Kofi's hand still on the unit six. Now we are almost 300. So we can continue from where we were last week. Go ahead, Vivian, unmuted, ask your question. If it's a question, go ahead. If it's a contribution, go ahead, Vivian. Okay, good morning, madam. Good morning, madam. The question, I wanted to no. ask the difference between a fallacy and then the modus tollens. I'm not getting it well. What is what? 
a fallacy in the module students. Tolerance. Did you say tolerance? Yes, tolerance. Tolerance and modus ponens and hypothetical syllogism and disjunctive syllogism are all valid deductions. Okay. That means they are not fallacies. They are valid. It means you are, you are pulling the conclusion directly from the premises and you are doing so correctly. So it's a deduction and it is a valid one, it's a correct deduction. It means that it is possible to do a deduction, but do it wrongly. Then you create a formal fallacy, okay? So modus ponens and modus tollens, has logism, and disjunctive syllogism are all valid deductions. They are not fallacies. However, th those other patterns of deduction that try to do modus ponens or tolens or hypothetical syllogism or disjunctive, you see, but doesn't do it well. The other ones that don't do the deduction correctly, we describe them as what? Formal fallacies. So instead of affirming the antecedent in a modus ponens valid argument, instead of doing that, if you rather affirm the consequence, we would say you are committing the fallacy of what? Affirming the consequent. So it is a deduction, but it is what? Not done properly. That one is not done well. So it's not a good or a valid deduction. So we call it a formal fallacy of what? Affirming the consequent. Then there's also the formal fallacy of negating, or if you like, denying the antecedent. And then the one that we call the false hypothetical syllogism. I hope that helps, Vivian. Yes, please. Keep learning. Telecom, what's your question? Gabriel. Telecom. Okay, if it's not a question, then Sydney. Sydney, go ahead with your question or your contribution. Um, good morning, madam. Morning, sir. Um, I wanted to take us back a little bit to what you said okay, don't worry. Yes, about I yes. You said that um, using the example, Adwa was pregnant for for nine months and then she gave birth. Amatu was pregnant for nine months and then she gave birth. You're using that to describe a descriptive um, sentence that is an empirical law, right? The and then you use the meta. For, let me clarify. So the conclusion you draw from that, if you did all these past observations and so you mm -hmm. come to a, a conclusion, Mm, that all women deliver in nine months, okay? That mm -hmm. conclusion will be based on what? Observations of the past unit five. So we will call it a generalization that is what? Factually based, describing what you saw, what you observed in the past. That is what is giving you grounds to come to that supposed generalization. You took a fish out of water, five minutes, it died. The last time you took another fish, five minutes, it was dead. The third time you took a fish, five minutes, you say, oh, fishes don't live beyond five minutes outside of water. This statement I've just made is a general statement. Remember the reference class is infinite, okay? But this generalization is not prescribing. Remember value judgment versus factual statement versus definition is unit one. This statement is not prescribing. It is only describing what has been observed by the description is capturing a generality. So you say it's an empirical generalization. Okay, continue with your question, unless it's clear. But, okay, for the, the normative, you said that it's prescribing and you what use the normative? example of metas. What is a normative statement yourself? Okay, not what I said. What is a normative statement? What, what I know of it, so what is a normative um, and, uh -huh. and a normative statement is a law or a statement that shows how things in nature should be. Should that's the point. So should if be. it is should, then it's a prescription. Yes, but then okay. women should give birth after nine months. But that is not a generalization, it's not a law, law, law like statement. I reference unit five, the two types of laws main categorizations of laws, generalizations. I think you should do a revision of your unit five, okay? Then if there are still okay. questions, send me a message. 
We are not talking about generalizations compared to particular statements, okay? Right now, I just wanted to chip because I got one or two comments. I felt that it would be helpful to others who may not have taken notice, okay? And your, your textbook mentions law-like generalizations and theoretical definitions, two types of normative statements. If you don't clarify for students, they will think that as soon as they see law-like generalizations, they should think of them only as empirical in nature. Then that will cause a confusion in their minds because normative statements are not supposed to be empirical in nature. And here we are having a type of normative statement describing what they think is called an empirical statement. That will sound like confusion. And I got comments, okay? So I'm sending it out there to help those who may have that confusion. Reference your page 120 in the textbook after unit, after you identify the activities there, and you get quite a number of them. One describing a law like hypothesis, another describing theoretical definitions, and both labeled as what normative statements. Okay, let's take a, is it Hudson? Hudson, go ahead. Hudson, go ahead, please. With your question or your comment, if it's a question or comment. Hudson, are you there? Okay, if it's not a question, let's take, um, is it just Sam? Uh, is it Jose Maria or Jose Maria? Go ahead. You are all muted, so you may have to unmute. You will have to unmute and then talk, please. Is it a question, Selikem? Your hand is still up. Selikem Gabriel, or well, you are sorted now? Uh, Madam. Yes, this uh, the, the deductive argument and the, this thing, the inductive argument. Yes. Yes, is that a deductive argument? Uh, inferences leading to a conclusion. Your question, no. that's your question, okay? Yeah, I'm saying, is that a deductive argument? It is two premises leading to a conclusion. I said, what is what leading to what? I would rather you when, just ask what you want to ask, because if you say what I haven't said, then we'll be going back and forth. So ask what is confusing in your mind. Doc, please, I want clarity on X or Y. Let, let it be an interrogative. Don't let it be a, you know, imperative or something like that. <laughs> you see that? So ask what you don't understand. Don't don't say you said this or you said that. What is your question? You see that? That will be helpful to you. You couch it as a question, something you don't understand, and so that I can help you okay. get clarity. Okay. Then the in that case, that's, that's yes. Yes. What, what, what has it done? You don't understand it? No, the definition. I don't know what I got it. That's why I want how, to get how, it. how would you define induction? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. How would you have defined it? Because we, we spent close to 20 minutes doing the, dis the distinction between deduction and induction. So how would you it define it? How would you define uh, when when the conclusion is not is not matching? Did you engage? Were you with us last week, sir? Yes. Did you engage the content after our discussion? Pardon? Just the slides. Even just looking at the slides. Did you bother to look at the slides? Just the raw yes. slides. Yes. Uh, excuse me. What did you see in the slides? About, uh, um, about what you are asking me, sir. What you are asking me, you are asking me something. That's what I'm referring to. What did you see in the slides for that? If you remember. Uh, I, saw, I saw the conclusion may not like necessarily follow even the premises are true. Very good. That's what your friend also said. Is it that, is it that you don't understand that one? I, I was getting like for now. You were getting clarity on that. So, for example, if I said that uh, Selikem was the last person who left the building yesterday, so he, he stole our missing laptop. Should, should, should all of us say 
we have proven that you stole it, given that, yes, it was true that you were the last person who left the building. Does that necessarily mean that the conclusion that you stole the laptop cannot be false, even if the premise were true? I want a reaction no. from you. Uh -huh. You see that it could be true that you were the last person who left the building. And yet the conclusion we want to draw from that, that therefore you stole the laptop, may not necessarily follow. You get that? Yes. That is what we mean when we say that. So the reasoning here, the argument I'm making is an inductive one. I'm forcing the conclusion out of the premises. The conclusion doesn't necessarily follow what from the premises that is even if we granted that the premises were true the conclusion i'm drawing now doesn't necessarily follow from it it is possible for the premise to be true and yet the conclusion i've drawn to be false and it won't create any contradiction that tells us that, that then the reasoning was just an inductive one okay i think you have said that all women like money then my next premise said, my mother is a woman. So I conclude that my mother likes money. If it were true that all women like money, and it, it were true that my mother is a woman, then wouldn't it follow then hmm, that then my yes. mother likes money? Yes. 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 I hope you did that. Uh -huh. So that, that kind of reasoning, is what we call deductive. Deductive because if the premises were true, we will have no other way around it than to accept the conclusion that has been drawn from it. I hope I hope that is helpful. Yeah, yes, please. All right. All the best. That question will help add it. That's why I took my time to take you to. All right. So Thank we will take one or two more. You all the best. That one or two more, and then we are good to go. Yes, madam. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Please, do you have questions? I see. Okay, let me take Coleman. Coleman, go ahead. Coleman, please ask your question. Yeah. Um, is any mm. clarity? Uh, I feel of the what? The consequence and then the, um, the How do you understand it? We can't do the whole lecture, but I, I will help you with your confusion. So how do you understand the fallacy of affirming the consequence? If I gave you the premise, if you study, then you will pass. I've given you that first universal statement or conditional statement. If you study, then you will pass. What would be the next premise if we were doing modus ponens? Let's go that way first. Using Kofi, if you study, then you will pass. Using Kofi, what would be the next premise? Oh, man, mommy, let her speak, please. Kofi would not. I'm talking about modus ponens. Paul, P for Paul. If you study, then you will pass. Modus ponens, what would be the next premise? Coleman, Mami Coleman, we are listening. Hello, madam. That is why oh. the problem is so because if you don't know the original, you can't tell the counterfeit. You see, okay. you must know the original so well. Then when we are telling you that the counterfeit, you know, it has so and so features, it's so and so, it will make meaning. But if you don't know the original, when I add a counterfeit, it, it even brings confusion. So you have to know modus ponens, which is what? affirming the antecedent that one is valid yes, then yes. you can now tell when we say you see you didn't do what modus ponens does this one is doing the opposite of modus ponens it is rather affirming the consequence then that will be meaningful to you so you have to revise your notes i recorded a session i've uploaded it the link is shared all over the place if you are on my channel you already see it if you are on the course site you will have the link, you know, so you have to do that bit. Otherwise, you won't do well. I'm talking to the class now. It's that thinking, there's no bypassing. If you don't study it, you won't do it. You won't do well, period. It's a critical thinking course. <laughs> okay, so just make an effort at it. 
let's give ourselves uh, some time and say, eh? Mami and any other one amongst you who wants clarity on that. I suspect some of you have come in from other groups or you have just landed from uh, outside of uh, space. You have come because uh, the uh, interim assessment is around the corner, I suspect. It's just a suspicion. Or some two are legitimately engaging the content, but they are going through difficulties. Let's have clarity on how you do modus ponens. Then you can tell the fallacy of what affirming the consequence. Then go to those the, the modus tollens. Then you can tell the fallacy that rather negates the antecedent. Okay. All right. So polish that up a little for me, mommy, and then send me a message if if you get the modus ponens very well. Then I'll show you the other one that we call the fallacy of affirming the consequence. It is doing uh, contrary to what you should do with modus ponens. Who am I, Eric? Please ask your question. Oh, After that, I'll take Hannah, and then we are ready to continue with our session today. Um, Come on, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, it's there now. It's you are there. okay now. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Excellent. Let's take Hannah. Hannah, go ahead. Uh, Hannah. Amate. Anna, you are muted. So unmute and ask your question. Eh? We had a really jolly time last week. I, I hope that we are able to keep the momentum. Okay. Let's 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 go. Yes, madam. Madam. Go ahead, Hannah. Madam, please, it's not a question. I'm just saying exactly. Go ahead. Sorry, please. Okay, madam. I'm asking whether you started sharing the screen because I can't see. No, I have not shared the screen yet. I'm taking questions. Okay. When I start sharing, I'll probably talk it again. Okay, thank you. Most welcome. Um, so we'll take um Theophilus. I just saw your hand. So let's take yours also, and then I think that we are we are so okay to go now. Theophilus, go ahead. You are muted, Theophilus. You are muted. Oh. If it's a question, on mute. On mute, please. All right. So I guess we will we will take off, and then if Tuplus's question is still there, we can address it for him later. I'm now sharing a screen. So if you can't see the screen, then you can prompt. What I am showing now is deduction versus induction. My lady, can you see the screen, please? Please, can you see my screen? Yes, madam. Excellent. So we can move. Last week, we went through all of what yeah, is there. We've done question. substantive portions of what we have to do today. Kindly keep yourselves muted, friends. Okay. We, we went through all the... I said, oh, most part of the slides, I try to cut them in, in manageable sizes for you so that you won't forget. So on this screen, my dear mommy, I hope you'll be looking, okay? I'm just going through briefly. So see, we, we discussed deduction versus induction, and we saw how to correctly distinguish the two. And it is a question of logical necessity, not so much a question of moving from general to particular or particular to general, as some textbooks have done. We had a recall of what an argument is, which you should remember, because the two types of reasoning we are dealing with, or the two types of arguments are called deduction and induction. So you would have to remember what an argument is, and we did that. And on your screen, you can remember we went through this over and over again to show why the first one is deductive, but the second is inductive. And the conclusion, Selikam, the conclusion for the second one doesn't necessarily follow from the premises up there. If it were even true that most Ghanaians are hospitable and my mother is a Ghanaian, it doesn't have to necessarily mean, therefore, that she's hospitable. Because our premise said most, it didn't say all. So my mother could be part of the few that are not included in the most. You see that. So this reasoning in two on the screen now is what induced, the conclusion is induced 
from the premises. Whereas the first one is deduce the conclusion, so she writes exams necessarily follows if it were true that all students write exams and Amma is a student. We saw all of that. The same is going on here. Okay. Now the, the reasoning pattern below for deductive argument for look on the screen on the four there. All mangoes are fruit. My pen is not a fruit. So it is not a mango. This will be helpful to Mami Coleman. Mami, so just play around with it a little. As I go through, maybe things will settle for you. All mangoes are fruits. My pen is not a fruit. So it is not a mango. This is valid. Not just deductive, but it is deductively valid. Which one is that? It's a negation of the consequent first, which led to a negation of the antecedent. Okay. Look at the second premise here is what is naming the, the argument. So when I say all mangoes are fruit, the antecedent is X is a mango. The consequence is what? X is a fruit. I'm going to build on that today. So make sure your foundations are right. The foundation is not good. There is nothing you can build on it. That will start. So get it. All mangoes are fruit. Antecedent is X is a mango. Consequence is X is a fruit. Then the, look at the second premise. I say my pen is not a fruit. My pen is not a fruit. It's a negation of the consequent. Okay, that is what has happened. After the universal statement, all mangoes are fruit. What I do next is I say my pen is not a fruit. Negation, not a fruit. The negation of the consequent. Denial of the consequent. Then I concluded, so it is not a mango. Okay, so not fruit, therefore not mango. That reasoning is valid. And it is the type called what? Modus tollens. We learned that. What you shouldn't do is to study this content and put it down till the next time we meet again. I have told you I'm not going to write an exam. I don't need a first degree. You are the one who needs a first degree. Always have that thinking. So the lecturer or the teacher or whoever is imparting knowledge, depending on how much experience or training he or she has in the field, may not even go back to the content till the next time that he or she has to engage it. And may not have a difficulty doing that. You see, but you should feel the need and the desire and the conscious effort to engage the content again and again and again. So you are very confident within yourself. As for this specific topic, I'm well grounded in it. Bring it, bring it on, and we will be ready to do it. If you don't do that and you put it down, look at the, the tent. Antecedent, consequent, modus ponens, modus to just one unit, one unit. But look at all the things you have to do. See that. So it will become overwhelming. Meanwhile, it is not. It is just an effort that you need, uh, you know, on your part. Okay. So see what is on the screen now. The word contradiction. You should remember, you can't say that all women are cheats. My mother is a woman, yet you don't want to accept by your own premises that therefore she's a cheat. You create a contradiction, opposite language, okay? It's not possible, therefore, for you to accept premises as true and reject conclusions. See how I'm repeating that over and over and over again. I think we said that uh, deduction is topic neutral. When we are doing deductive reasoning, that's the, the type of argument that is deducing. We don't care what the content is. We are not focused on the actuality of it. We are just interested in the logical pattern. So I, I gave a funny example, if you remember last. I said, all oh, chichis are churches. This thing is a chichi. It has to follow, therefore, that it is a chacha by modus ponens. And we don't know what chichi and chacha represent. Whether there is anything existing that is chichi or chacha won't matter. It will still be valid because we are just interested in what the pattern of thought, not the content of the thought. That is very uh, uh, pronounced in the lecture slides. Then we, we started looking at the types. By now, I'm sure you know the types of reasoning. Remember the, the term syllogism. I would introduce you to n theming today. If you haven't seen it already, you should have seen it by now. And tell me, but just take note of it. If if we don't touch it, always remember that you should revise that. Why? Because it's, it's a reasoning pattern where you omit one of the premises. Okay, so you have one main premise and then the conclusion. 
you don't bring in the hidden one. Yet we are able to we are able to tell what the hidden one is because of the reasoning part. So we have a, a valid deed action. For example, let me ask the class. If I say all oh, mangoes are fruits, then I conclude, therefore, it what I'm holding is a fruit. What is the hidden premise? I say it again. All mangoes are fruits. Therefore, what I am holding is a fruit. You see that I've skipped one premise over there before I, I arrived at the conclusion. What is the one that I have skipped? I'm holding a mango. Very good. I'm holding a mango. I'm holding a mango. Very good. I am Just hands went up and they did the right thing. <laughs> Those who raised their hands did the right thing. So thank you. Eh? I'm saying that so when we have a main premise, and then we don't add the second one. In other words, we take out one of the premises. It's a three-step reason, it's a logism, okay? That's what we said. A syllogism is what? Two premises leading to one conclusion in a valid, uh, in a deduction, a valid deduction. That's a syllogism, we know that already. So all the four valid patterns we are studying are all syllogisms. We have learned that also already. But I was just introducing one tiny little addition that I could give you the main premise and then conclude without giving you the second premise. I take that one out. But if you look at the pattern, you are able to tell because it is a valid reasoning. The middle step uh, premise that has been taken out, you can introduce that. So you can have exam questions like that. You should be able to determine what the hidden premise is and what type of reasoning pattern it was. What we just did was modus ponens and your friends easily introduced the hidden premise, okay? Now that type of argument, a valid one, Okay, where you see only one premise and a conclusion, but the other premise is hidden or suppressed. You don't see it there. It's what we give a big name to. It's nothing big there. Eh? N ter If you are spelling it, you spell it N die die T H Y N die meme M E M E. It's in your textbook, so you should make an effort at it. Okay, N term. So the, the, you can be as which of the following is an end term, and then you, you may be given uh, valid, valid reasonings. The one that has only one premise with a conclusion, and if you were to introduce that hidden premise, you create a valid argument, the one we call the end term. All right. I saw it on your screen, so I thought I should check that in. Quickly, then we continue. So we did that also last week. Then we started with our valid patterns. For us to be able to understand antecedent and consequent, I went all the way back to remind you of particular versus general statements. Mm -hmm. uh, finite reference class. Study this one also very well, like I said last week, but you will need it for your unit seven, which is already uploaded in the dossier there. Some of you have never gone to your resource too. You are doing yourself so much harm, but you don't know. <laughs> don't create a life that will give you trouble. Go to the resource too and look for the, all the resources that have been uploaded by your lecturer. But most, most importantly, the dossier, there's a, a, a document that labeled a exam and IA dossier. It has unit seven, unit seven, unit nine, and unit 10 content, lecture content, which will uh, throw light on the textbook content for those units for you. They are technical and they are heavy. That is why you don't see much content on the units one, two, three, five inside the dossier because that those ones are easily accessible content. But the units that we have typed on are technical. Not technical as in difficult, but you need expertise hands to clarify for you. So we don't want us to have to be the, the student will have to be you know, touching, touching all over the place. That's why the team of lecturers have put them together and put it there for you. As you study it, you check it against what your lecturer or your instructor is teaching you against the textbook. And you are so fine. You have to get a lot of A's this semester, a lot of them, because we have put resources all over the place. TAs are there 24 hours. All the TAs are accessible to you. Every tutorial class is accessible to you. Every lecture is accessible to you. Every interactive session is accessible. How can you feel? The textbooks are sitting down there. You just have to do your own little reading and discussions, okay? And you should do fine. So I'm saying that this slide 
what you see now and the previous one are useful for your unit seven. All these, the same. If you know this, you know confirmable, verifiable, but I didn't delve into them in this unit. I moved on straight and then we started looking at universal affirmative statement, universal negative statement. In the bid to do what? To show you that if I say Ghanaians are hospitable, Ataya is hospitable. Therefore, Ataya is Ghanaian. Is that valid or not valid? Ghanaians are hospitable. Ataya is hospitable. Therefore, Ataya is Ghanaian. Valid or not valid? If valid, which type of validity is it? If not valid, which <laughs> type of... <laughs> So answer the first bit. Ghanaians are hospitable. Ataya is hospitable. Therefore, Ataya is a Ghanaian. Valid or not? All of us. Valid. 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 Therefore, Ataya is Ghanaian. Let me take Theophilus. Theophilus, is it valid or not? Portia, is it valid or not? The hands that are up to cannot respond. Marino, is it valid or not? Big Johnny. <laughs> Who wants to answer? Anyone wants to answer? Yes. Well, Dr. Shannon, I want to try. Madam. Madam. Hello, Dr. Shannon. Madam. 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 Hello, Dr. Yes, Madam. Madam. Is invalid. Please, it's okay. invalid. Why? Because you didn't see the number of people who said Madam, that. Madam, invalid. I'm showing you why. I'm showing you why. Please when the chat and few results are released, then you... <laughs> now people don't even know that they got it wrong. Madam is invalid. I, so the point is this. Listen, if you use how you think every day to answer critical thinking questions, okay, depending on who you are, you may get a lot of the questions wrong because we don't think right most of the times. And it is not an insult. It is just a human... Uh, uh, we, are, we are just gullible sometimes, okay? I said all Ghanaians are hospitable. Atayao is hospitable. So I'm concluding that therefore Ataya is Ghanaian. It's not valid. When we say all Ghanaians are hospitable, it is not the same as all hospitable people are Ghanaians. That is how you think. When I say all Ghanaians are hospitable, it just means all Ghanaians are inside the set, the big set. So all Ghanaians are a set of circles. Eh? It's inside the set of what? Hospitable people. Venn diagram. So the subset is Ghanaians. Inside a big rectangle of what? Hospitable people. There's enough room inside a, a rectangle for Togo people too, and for Ukraine people, and for Russia people, and for America. They are all inside the Venn diagram. Mm? They are all inside the rectangle. So you can have a circle inside the rectangle, that's Ghanaian. You can have a triangle inside that big rectangle, that's Togolese. You can have a, a what is the other shape? Rhombus inside the rectangle, that is a Ukraine. All of them are inside hospitability. <laughs> so when I say all Ghanaians are hospitable, don't think that I'm saying all hospitable people are Ghanaian. When I say women are cheats, it doesn't mean cheats are women. One is antecedent, the other is consequent. That is what I want you to know before we start hypothetical syllogism and disjunctive syllogism. It is in the mind. Okay, so when I say, uh, uh, what is it? Politicians are corrupt. Don't think that it means corrupt people are politicians. They are not the same. Those two statements are not the same. If I say politicians are corrupt, there's room inside the set of corruption eh, for lecturers also. 
So if I say politicians are corrupt, I'm just saying that if you find a politician, I mean, that's a very general statement we shouldn't be making. We can't ever substantiate it. Because some politicians are not even born in Unit 7. Okay, but for, for now, let's just build. If I say politicians are corrupt, and I put the set of politicians circle inside a rectangle uh, of politicians, please don't unmute. Not I'm trying to give you communication here. I'm trying to communicate. So you get it. If you understand the universal statement or the, the, the relation of antecedent with consequence, it will help you when you are doing your valid deductions. Okay, that is why I'm taking time to explain that. So if I say women are cheat, it just means there is a subset called women inside the big set of what cheats. But inside that big set, there can be men also as another subset inside that big set. And there can be what? Hermaphrodites, both man and woman, also there. Therefore, women are cheat doesn't mean men too can be cheat. They can also have a space in the rectangle of what cheats, if you are picturing a Venn diagram in your mind. Okay. What does that mean? That is why if I say Ghanaians are hospitable, think of it quickly in your mind that so there is a subset called Ghanaian inside the set of what? Hospitable people. It doesn't mean that you won't find some Togo people also there in another set. They are not Ghanaians, but they are also inside the big set. So they are their own, you know, group inside. Then they can be, like I said earlier, Ukraine people and all, and so on. Okay, so Ghanaians are hospitable. Look at how my second premise said, Ataya is hospitable. Therefore, I'm insisting that you should conclude, therefore, that Ataya is a Ghanaian. Why? Ataya could be a member of the Togo folks who is not Ghanaian, yet he's also inside a big set. I hope that it is clearer now. So you don't affirm the consequence. That's what I did. Ghanaians are hospitable. All you people were thinking about is what attire is the name of a Ghanaian. So you will be a Ghanaian. Remember, we said deduction is topic neutral. We are not concerned about whether the person's name is a girl's name or a boy's name. Because I have a dog called Nancy. The best dog was called Peggy. <laughs> you see, so you can say that. Okay. <laughs> so it's we, we are not interested in the actual name or what have you. We'll go round and round. When we do induction in Unit 7, then we will deal with the content most, every, whenever those things, we will look at it. But for deduction, it's topic neutral. So whether the name is Ataya or uh, uh, Kofi or Kwame, don't say oh, Kofi, there is an African name, so the person is right. That is not what deduction does. Deduction looks at the logic of it, the pattern of reasoning, the form. So if this were true and that were true, then this will also follow. If Chichi, then Chacha. Chichi has happened, therefore Chacha must follow. We don't care what Chichi and Chacha really are or actually is, whether there is anything at all called Chichi or Chacha. Get that to help you. All right. So the example I gave, which said Ghanaians are hospitable, attire is hospitable, was what? Affirming the consequence. And I said, therefore, attire is a Ghanaian. That's not valid. It's the fallacy that tries to do modus ponens, but does it wrongly. So we call it the fallacy of affirming the consequence. That's what I just did. And I tricked you. When you started, more than 30 people were saying valid, but I was just sitting down. Listen, some were coming confidently, valid, valid, valid. If it were true or false, because you have five seconds or 10 seconds to read it and answer. Look at the number of people who will be getting it wrong. So I need you to st stop being, a, not, not a, all of you, but don't be very complacent. No, this is critical thinking. Know the patterns, okay? If it is unit six, know the patterns. Understand what you are dealing with. Is it induction or deduction? What is the question asking you to do? Then diagnose. So I asked you, is this valid or not valid? Don't say, oh, it is sound. Did I ask you soundness? I said, is it valid or not valid? That is the question. So he says, uh, and I say, if valid, which type of validity? If not valid, which type of invalidity? And so on and so forth. The answer is simple. Those who are rule bound, people who like to obey simple rules, and you do very well. When they ask you, Adam, where are you? You say, I'm naked. Ah, where are you? You say, I'm naked. I dream finty. You say, Adam. All right. <laughs> That's just by the way. So I use that 
to help you remember some of the crucial things we did last week. I also touched on universal negations. So no man is perfect. No man no. is perfect. Yes, sir. Please. Is there uh, a yes, please. Go ahead. I see 17 hands. If it's not questions, please put your hands down so that I can call people who have questions. Go ahead, my brother. Is the example you gave the um, Ghanaians are hospitable. Yes. So if I want to continue and I say, Atayao is a Ghanaian, so mm -hmm. he's hospitable. Would mm -hmm. that be valid? What, what do you think? Valid. Which type of validity is that? Modus ponens. Correct. If I wanted to do tolerance, what would I have said next? What would I have said after Ghanaians are hospitable? Ghanaians are hospitable. Hey, Brian, um, is it tolerance? <laughs> I said tolerance. If I wanted to do modus tolerance, it is also valid. But how would I have done it? From Ghanaians are hospitable. Atel is not hospitable. Atel is not yeah. hospitable. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, Atel is not Ghanaian. And it would also have been valid. But this validity is what modus tollens. I, I suspect that would be helpful to my, my ladies that ask those questions. Okay, that would also have been valid. If I, I wanted to do uh, modus tollens, but I did it wrongly, then I would rather say this eh? Ghanaians are hospitable. I'm talking about the invalid form. Hmm? I'm trying to do okay. tollens, but I do it wrongly. The one we call what? Denying the antecedent. What would it have been? I would say Ghanaians are hospitable. Attire is not a Ghanaian. So I want to conclude that, therefore, attire is not hospitable. That will not be valid. Can you see it? Yes. Yes, because the fact that attire is not a Ghanaian, hmm? if I start and say Ghanaians are hospitable, picture it immediately. Subset Ghanaians inside a big set of what? Hospitable people. Remember that inside that same set will be other subsets, which are not Ghanaians, but they are also inside. But they are not Ghanaians. So the triangle there, the square inside the rectangle there. The triangle may be Togo people, the square green. Then Ghanaians, we are the circle. But we are all inside the big rectangle set. You should always remember that. That is the meaning of a universal statement. So now we said Ghanaians are hospitable. We have plotted that. Then the next premise, which I said, she is trying to do modus tollens, but does it wrongly. So we give it the name what denying the antecedent. Modus tollens rather denies the consequence. Then after that, concludes valid. Okay. This person will say attire is not Ghanaian. That just means attire is outside of the circle. But it doesn't necessarily mean she's out of the, the big rectangle. Can you see that if you are plotting it? Check. Attire is not Ghanaian, just means attire is not inside our, our subset circle there. But attire could still be within the big rectangle, just outside of the circle, but maybe inside the triangle of Togo, Togolese. All right. I'm using the symbolisms for those who can easily connect to what a mathematical symbol, Venn diagram. If you are mass phobia and the Venn diagram is rather giving you pressure, forget it and think about it as a rule, obey the rule, period. Okay. <laughs> I hope that helps, sir. Yes, yes, thank so, you. Welcome. So we are going on. You see that I'm not going to hypothetical in the house. Yes, madam. <laughs> Where are you living? Are you at Russia or something? <laughs> when I talk, it takes one hour before it gets to you. It is well, eh? <laughs> anyway, so listen, I was saying that I would rather you get a firm grip of the first two, the tolens and the ponens and their counterparts invalid forms so that as for the hypothetical and the disjunctive, as soon as these are well grounded the other ones on folks they are easier to grab okay so we have done that i was going to touch on something else we did last week the universal negative statement a statement that instead of saying all oh, these are that look at the top the ones on the screen now universal affirmative Ghanaians are hospitable christians worship on sundays alcoholics are womanizers Ghanaians approve of safe sex marriage. These are all universal affirmative. The word affirmative just means positive. There is no negation in it. So in the Ghanaians are this, Christians are that, alcoholics are this, you know, that kind of statement. Universal negative statements are negative. Look at the name, they are negative. So they say no man is perfect. 
no cat is a dog, no goods require vaccinations, statements like that, you, you see that. Huh? Now, if you have that, first of all, you must identify your antecedent and your consequence. Those universal statements, the negations, mm, are not a subset. When you are plotting, it's not a subset. So when I say no man is perfect, you don't draw a set of man as a circle and put it inside a, a Venn diagram. No, no, no. It's not a subset of, it's a disjoint set. Circle to the left, there's a space between then square to the right. They don't have any connection. When I say no man is perfect, I just mean that if you find any X who is a man, that X will not be perfect. It will have nothing to do with perfection. This joint set. Get that picture also in your mind so that you can now interpret why we do the deduction that we do that way. Universal affirmative statement, one is a subset of the other. The antecedent is inside the big statement, the consequence, okay? Plus the universal negative, one is this joint from the other. No cat is a dog. If X is a cat, excuse me, then X is not at all. That's what it means. There is nothing connecting the two of them together. Now we can build on that. So on the screen now, remember we looked at disguised conditionals. I may not have to upload this video. You already have the full unit six lecture video from the supervisor for that unit who set your questions. Okay. So if I if I finish and I think I should upload this, then I'll do that. Too many videos and lectures and slides and textbook and tutorial and like, hey, aren't you tired? <laughs> Engage it. We are not, uh, we are not tired. We are not tired. Yeah, so they keep learning. <laughs> keep learning all of them. Okay. You do very fast. Yeah, sir. Uh, I hear you. This okay. guy's okay. conditionals. Okay. So I, I said that if you have a universal statement, this is actually an if-then statement. That's also on the screen. If I say all oh, women are cheating, I'm actually saying which X is the Yes, woman. madam. No, that. Okay, I see quite a number of hands up. Are there questions? Emmanuel Jordan, it's just a question. Esther Akins, Marino, Selikan, Semoji. I see all those hands up. Uh, Portia, Lati. Uh, if it's a question, please ask. If it's not a question, then can you lower your hand? Sydney. Sydney, it's just a question. Yeah, Gerald, go ahead with your question. Gerald, ask your question. Um, from what you just showed us about the universal arguments, it means that every deductive argument. What is universal argument? I've not talked about hey, universal. I don't mean, argument. I mean, universal statement. Yeah. Uh, universal statement. Yes. Um, uh, that means that. Does that mean that every deductive argument is stemming from a universal main premise. We did that last week. Were you with us last week or you, you, you landed yes, for much time? I was, but then when you reach, when you reach no. that part, Okay, so part. even this morning, I've said that if you if you say that deduction moves from general to particular and induction moves from particular to general, it will not be a good way of distinguishing okay. general from particular. Okay. Because I could say uh, Kofi is taller than Kwame, and Kwame is taller than Koju. It will have to deductively follow that therefore Kofi is taller than Koju. You see, if I said Kofi is taller than Kwame, and Kwame too is taller than Koju, then it means Kofi is taller than Koju. Meanwhile, none of the three statements is a generalization. Yet the conclusion I draw that Kofi is taller than Koju is a deductive one. Because if the premises I have given were true, this conclusion must also be true. Okay, so it is not a matter of general to particular or particular to general. It is what conditions making the premises true would also make the conclusion necessarily true. It's a question of logical necessity. That makes one reductive and another inductive. When we learn uh, the types of generalization, you see that we can have a general premise concluding with a particular conclusion, and yet the reasoning is inductive. But you have to understand the types of generalization before we do that. Okay, so I don't want to touch on that. Okay, so now. All right, I don't know if that helps. Yeah. Yes, it does. Excellent, let's move on. So on the screen now, the, the thing I was saying about universal negations, 
and how to open it out as a conditioner. If A, then B. If you have a universal negation, all men are not so and so. That's a, a universal negation. Or better still, no man is perfect. No cat is a mama. No this are that. No student will register unless she's for those examples in your test. If you see such, you open it out to read as if X is a student, then X will not register unless forced. Now on the screen, this one's true. We saw some of them. No cats are dogs. It's just saying that if X is a cat, then X is not a dog. That is the literal meaning of this universal negation. Now, when you write it this way, then you are able to tell what your Hello. antecedent Hello. is and what your consequence is. So no cats are dogs. What's the antecedent? X is a cat. What is the consequent? X is not a dog. This is given. Let's practice more. On the screen now. Oh dear. No humans have feathers. What is the antecedent of the statement? No humans have feathers. We can use X for uniformity. X is a human. No humans have feathers. Right. Right. As you could do is it. Uh, oh, okay. okay, so let's take if we Sabia. If we no humans have feathers, let's use X. What's the antecedent? Very good. Let's use a human. Oh, oh dear. So please stop. Eh? What is the consequent? Uh, Portia? Then X is not. Human. Are you Portia, Brian? <laughs> Go for Are you Portia? No, madam. What's the consequent then? What was the consequent? Have no feathers. Have no feathers. Well done, Portia. So the have no feathers was given. You see, Portia, that's what I'm Portia. trying to say. Hello, madam. Hi. Yes, auntie. Please, I have cannot feathers. see your screen. Re re refresh your gadget. Eh? Madam, please, we can't see your screen. It is like what happens when you are, you keep your phone for a while. You see that it dims, but it is there. Okay, so just refresh your gadget and you see it. Um, now let's do some practice. Thank then you, ready to, uh, Let's do some practice and you will be so ready to do uh, hypothetical syllogism and the others. So let's practice. Write down this universal statement. We'll do one with universal affirmative. Then we'll build on it and do universal negative. But let's go systematically. Don't rush. If you rush, you will trip and fall. Then the whole thing you are carrying, the eggs you are carrying will scatter. You have to go and start again. So work with me steadily. Mm. Now, let's work with the statement, all cats are mammals. All cats are mammals. Write it down wherever you are, please. All cats are mammals. If you can, just write it down. What is the antecedent of this universal statement? Look at what I can do with it. Yes, I, maybe we can do some choral senses if you will just be, uh, you will just comport yourselves. It helps for us to see where people stand. Uh, what is what is the antecedent of this statement? All cats are mama. All cats, what I mean, all, all cats. cats. All okay, cats. All cats cat is not an antecedent. Cats. <laughs> if X is a cat, X is a cat. That is what because there could have been a possible answer that said all cats. The another one would say if X is a cat, the next one. Thank you, madam. Let me finish, okay? There's one that will say. Uh huh. You can have one that says all cats. Another one will say B cats. C so can say if X is a cat, then D will be sitting somewhere quietly. X is a cat. Take note that antecedent and consequent. They are statement. They are complete statement. They should be either true or false. If I say all cats, will you say true to that? It's a sentence fragment. So when I ask you to write down the antecedent of the given conditional. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you to write out the complete statement, atomic statement that come together to form that compound called all cats are mama. So you tell me X is a cat, 
it is that is what the antecedent and then what x is a mama is what your consequence let's practice with another one quickly so write this down uh Ghanians, yeah right yes sir Ghanians like money don't worry about the examples i've told you this topic neutral i want something that you don't have to struggle to even understand it's just true Ghanians like money okay uh, uh -huh. if we were to use coffee uh, then then we would say uh, what is our antecedent please Coffee likes money. Kofi is a Ghanaian. Kofi is a Ghanaian. Kofi is a Ghanaian. I hope you get it now. Because we are trying to, yes, we are opening it out to get our antecedent. Well done. So Kofi is a Ghanaian. How about the consequence? Kofi likes money. Madam, please, I can't see your screen. Kofi likes money. Kofi likes money. Well done. Well done. Now, one more. So universal affirmative. So don't get confused. Here I'm using the words universal affirmative. Mm. Universal affirmative. They are now falling into place. So let's take the last one. Uh, uh, Men are lazy. That's yes, sir. <laughs> Men are lazy. Okay. So if, if we want the consequent of the statement, men are lazy, using uh, the name that I keep seeing. Let's use Kofi now. Kofi is a man. Kofi is a man. Kofi is a man. Kofi is lazy. Kofi is lazy. Kofi is lazy. What I'm trying to do. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to you see how I, I move from antecedent and all of a sudden I ask consequent. I want people to follow the, follow the leader. Uh -huh. All the time. That is what critical thinking is teaching you to do. So when the person is giving, say, the state of the nation's address, or you are going for a conference to represent Ghana, a critical thinker is an apt listener. You take note of the words. You are careful. That is the training. Look at slide one a careful, deliberate suspension of judgment until you have enough justification to either accept or reject a certain claim. Enough, based on your skills that you have developed. So you have to have a very apt listening skill. Don't say, that, oh, they said that, oh, uh, three SHS, uh, or the ELBA, ELBA. Have you interrogated the man? Did you hear the gentleman? Did they say they are going to pay you this year? They say, well, we'll take you into our company. We really need a woman like your type so that the company will have a feminist posture and all that. Apparently, inside that document, they said they'll start paying in the third year. You didn't read that one. You just looked at all the funds they are giving you. We want you to have that skill. You don't go and sell us out and put your signature on document before you come home to read it. So be very attentive to notice announcement when you ask the questions. Sometimes they are asking you, Tell us, is the argument sound? What makes it, a, for example, one, one assessment I did recently, I asked them, if an argument is sound, then at least one of its premises will be true. Is that true or false? Well, true. 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 False. It's true. true. One of its premises. True. Is true. true. False. It's false. Okay. True. Yeah. So now let's. Okay. It's thank true. you very much. Now let's. If you say it's true, why? That's what I said. If an argument is true, uh, excuse me. If an argument is sound, then at least one of its premises is true. One of you. Who wants to unmute him? Because there are thirteen of you. Okay, my friend, who says false? Hold on. My friend, false. you, my auntie, hold on. My friend, gentleman, who said it's false? Why? Okay, thank you for the opportunity. Um, yeah. For sound argument, if you have all the promises should be true very and good. valid. Very, very good. Well done. All the premises, all that you mean some. You can say at least. It means that I'm saying that, oh, if there are 30 premises and 29 of them are true, it's enough to make. That's not that's not what soundness is. All of the 30 must be true, actually. In observation, they must actually be true before that already valid argument will be sound. So this one, uh, this true of you yourself, you saw that if you were marking, you had, you had your friends. <laughs> 
it is a question of being particular about details, okay? Yes. So I, I use that to also that. help you remember how we define soundness, which is also in your unit six. Yes, sir. Um, please, for the example you gave that men are lazy. Yes. What is, is the consequence? Um, please, is the antecedent? What is the um, consequence here? I, you see that I'm, I'm going ahead. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. What's the consequence? The consequence is Which Kofi? Kofi is lazy. Very good. What's the antecedent? And that's my question I want to ask. Keep quiet, please. So, uh, let the brother answer. Please, please, please help him. My brother, what's the antecedent? If you say the consequence is Kofi is lazy, uh -huh. the statement is men are lazy, so, and you say the consequence is Kofi is lazy, then what, what do you think the antecedent is? Let the gentleman speak. I don't like that. My brother, go ahead. Uh. Okay. So the antecedent is Kofi is a man. Very good. You see, that's how that's we learn. Be patient with people. Uh -huh. So now he knows the antecedent. Now ask me your question. But my question is, you see, for the slides you gave us, you said the if clause is the antecedent. Yes. So what's the if clause? Kofi is a man. When I say so let me explain. When I say men are lazy, that's a universal statement. Do you realize that look on the screen now, sir? Do you realize that all universal statements are look on the screen? I put it back. When you have a universal statement like what we have now, men are lazy. It is a conditional statement that is disguised itself. Okay. So if I say men are lazy, I'm saying if any X at all is a man. Oh my God. Then, then that X is what? Lazy. Okay. Big boss, are you with me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so when you have men are lazy, we have summarized it as a universal affirmative statement. It looks rounded and crisp, but it is actually a conditional statement in disguise. I hope you get that point now. So yes, if I write it out the way I have done now, then you are able to tell which one is the clause that uh, uh, that the if is carrying. What I say, the if clause. You see that the antecedent is X is a man. You see after the if, what you see next is X is a man. Uh -huh. Then after the then, what you see next is, next is what X is lazy. The same thing is going on on your screen if you are watching. So the if clause, clause is, I don't know how to teach that in logic now, it's English, okay? Not a phrase, it's a clause. It's as if it's complete, but it's not, you know, because of the if, it takes away the completeness. So when you take away the if, what you have now is what? X is a man. Then when you take away the then, what you have is what? X is a booty. Uh -huh. I don't know if it is okay now, and th that elaboration is also there. So antecedent. On your screen now. I hope that is okay. Yeah, yes, yeah. Uh, my brother, are you okay? All right. Yes, so ma'am. Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. That will help someone. So people should be patient. All cats are mamas. We just use it to help us identify the antecedent and the consequence. Ghanaians like money. Then we, we did men are lazy. Let's do universals. Uh, universal what negation still identifying antecedent and consequence so now let's take the statement the universal negation i showed you how to open it out no mangoes are cats what's the antecedent of the statement no mangoes are cats use the variable x let's start talking technically okay. no mangoes are me. Answer, madam, me answer. When people become with you, then I give them the opportunity. Don't mind me. <laughs> madam, X is not a mango. Oh, antecedent, no. No mangoes are cat. Madam, I say, oh dear. X is a mango. No cat. Sister, mm -hmm. antecedent is what? X is what? A mango. If X is a mango. A mango. If X is a mango. Hey, sister, now boy, is a cat. Therefore, X is not a cat. Be careful with your therefores and it and argument and don't don't use these are technical words. Okay, so if you use it wrongly, you will have a problem. The antecedent is 
X is a man. Take away the if. If you add if to it, it becomes a sentence fragment. If I say if X is a man, you can't say true or false. If only I went to school. That's not a statement. Topic one. Uh -huh. So just say X is a man. That is correct. In our example, no mangoes are cut. The, the antecedent is X is a man. Then the consequence is what? X is yeah. not a cat. Then X, X is, is not, 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 not a cat. Very good. This X yeah. is not a cat. You see that it was given to us because the statement is a universal negation. I hope you get that. We didn't put that not yes. there. It is part of the package. We just exposed the original entrails of the package that was given to us. And we saw that there is negation. If you got a hold on, please, for a minute. If you got that, then let's try another one. Universal negation. No cat is a dog. These are all from your textbooks. Your textbook. No cat is a dog. Tell me the, the consequence of your statement. No cat is a dog. X is not 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 a dog. Well done. Very good. Yeah. Now we can build on it. So now you know how to find antecedent and consequence. X is, really is not a dog. Thank you, sir. Which is really the headache of most of you, if not many of you, okay? The difficulty in identifying your antecedent and your consequence. That has been a challenge for some people. <laughs> if you know that raw material, then you are able to do, then you are able to do modus ponens easily because the fair name of modus ponens is what? affirming the antecedent yes. so now you know antecedent you understand what it means to affirm affirm just means bring it as it was given to you don't change it so if it was originally positive bring it as positive that antecedent bring it as as it was given then when we say denying or negating it means turn the original upside down so if it was originally positive Turn it upside down. Introduce a knot to make it negative. Okay, so let's let's go systematically. Modus ponens using our examples that we created earlier. All cats are mammals. All cats are mammals. By modus ponens, X. What should be the next premise? Remember its name. Modus ponens, which is valid. Sister, who wanted to know the difference? Modus ponens is a valid deduction. The other name for modus ponens is what? Affirming the word antecedent. We know antecedent already. If we are confused, we can open it out, even at the exam center. And in our minds, I say that, oh, if they say all cats are mammals, it's just another way of saying if X is a cat, then X is a mama. And that helps me to know my if clause and then the then clause. The if clause becomes my antecedent, the then clause becomes my consequent. Then I can work with it. You see, that's how you learn. So what? So we know all cats are mammals. We want to do modus ponens. What should we say next to affirm the antecedent? X is a cat. X is a cat. X is a cat. Yes. Simple. Therefore, X is a cat. S is a mama. S is a mama. Well done. That's modus ponens. Yes. So after we were giving the universal statement, we went straight ahead to affirm the antecedent. Oh, that is what we did. That's why the uh, excuse me, the reasoning called modus ponens is described as affirming the antecedent. That is the reason. Okay. The second example was uh, where is it called? Ghanaians like money. Use adwa modus ponens still. Well done. That is also valid. It is still modus ponens. We are still working with a universal affirmative statement. We know our antecedent and the consequent. And since it's modus ponens, the correct pattern is to affirm the antecedent. Well done. Let's go to the last one, so with the universal affirmative. Take all your time and understand step by step, like you are preparing Kukunti. Otherwise, you are in the area, I just pouring, pouring, pouring. Before long, you have done pupunsu for us. You can't eat. 
Men are lazy. Modus ponens. Ponens. X is a man. S is a man. X is a man. Yes, man. man. Yes, man. Yes, man. I don't know. Please. Please. X, X is a man, therefore X is. Therefore X is lazy. lazy. Very good. It's lazy. Yes. Okay. You can diagnose all of them to determine whether they are sound or not. If you say all oh, women are lazy, all men are lazy, it cannot be true out there factually. So it may be valid by modus ponens like we have done, but it is not sound and we know why. Okay, now we can do the universal negations. Be careful not to get yourself confused. There is no need to be confused. It's the same thing. Just obey simple rules and you will do fine. So we are going to, I won't do the uh, fallacy of affirming the consequence. I'm sure now you know. Instead of saying, uh, where is it, Kra? The first one said, all cats are mammals. Instead of doing what we did right now, X is a cat. Therefore, we conclude that X is a mammal to make it valid by modus ponens. This person will rather go and say, all cats are mammals. S is a mama, so we should take it to mean that S is a cat. And we have already seen why that is not valid. It is rather affirming the consequence. The same will run through for all the examples, and that would constitute affirming the consequent fallacy. The sister who had that issue, I'm sure she's getting some clarity now. All right, now we want to look at still modus ponens, but doing universal negations, okay? It is not difficult, just that the original statement given to us, if we open it out, will have negation in the consequent, which we have to bring as it is. We don't change it. So no mangoes are cats. By modus ponens, what should be the next premise? X. X is a mango. Therefore. X is not a cat. Very good, yeah. correct. Well done. Thank you, Tuplos. Next one, for a sister. I prefer a sister to respond to this one. No cat is a dog. By modus ponens, X. X is not a cat. X is not a dog. X is a cat. You didn't rather. You have heard it. So originally, originally, X is a cat. Therefore, the conclusion is X is not a cat. That's also correct. Me, if you want it. And so you can now see how to work with, how to work with universal affirmative statement and universal negative statement for modus ponens. It's so clear, I, I believe it's so clear now. Now let's see modus tollens, the same statement, but we are going to de de deduce what? Another pattern of validity. Those by the people, you will see. Yes, another form of validity, but not modus ponens. So my friends, ladies, we revised that moment ago and gentlemen, we revised that moment ago, that modus tollens has another name, which is what? Denying the consequent. That means after your universal statement or your conditional, what you bring next mm, is what? The consequent. But because you want to bring the consequent, you can't bring it as it was given to you. Otherwise, you commit the fallacy of affirming the consequent. So you have to turn it upside down. Like saying that he is first from the bottom. You negate it. Okay. So from the given premise, the main one, the universal statement, you bring the consequent first, but what negated, turned upside down. So if the original statement is negative, then when you turn it upside down, it will become positive. If the original is positive, when you turn it upside down, it becomes negative. Nege, nege, for two negatives become positive, I think. Okay, so let's start with universal affirmative statements to do our modus tonus. All cats are mammals. Our consequent is what? X is a mama. We X have is, yeah. uh -huh. so we want to bring them X is a mama first. But then if we bring it as it was given to us, we'll commit the fallacy that affirms the consequence. So we say all cats are mammals. X is not a what? A mama. X is not a mama. Therefore, we can a mama. Mama. If you know, if you know, if you know, hey, some of you, why are you, why are you on this earth? Why are you bound? <laughs> 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 Don't worry. So all cats are mama. X is not a mama. Therefore, X is not a cat. That's valid. 
Really? Yes, it is. Which type of validity is that? Modus volens. If you want to picture it on the Venn diagram, then think of yes. it. All cards are inside the set of mama. The set of mama is a rectangular one. In the Venn diagram. Hmm? Then we ask that our second premise is saying X is not a mama. It means X is outside of the big set, the Venn diagram, Nankasa, the rectangular one. X is not even inside the rectangle. Then it can never be inside the subset. So that's the logic behind it. And so when you negate the consequent that is given to you, and then you conclude by negating the antecedent. Make sure you follow through to the end, not partial. Now you do the negation of the consequent and you leave the rest. Or you affirm the antecedent, the other one you don't. So you have to study the whole argument to the end and make sure it has followed the pattern fully. Okay? Then we say that is valid by two lengths. Now we say anything, I shut up and ask someone. Ghanaians like money. Modus two lengths, validity. What will it be? Let's use coffee. Two lengths. Ghanaians like money. Kofi doesn't like money. Kofi doesn't like money. Kofi like money. Kofi do not like money. Okay. I think a lot of you said it right. One or two, I didn't hear it properly, so I want to say it. Uh, Ghanaians like money. Kofi does not like money. You want the money matter to come first. Kofi does not like money. Therefore, Kofi is not a Ghanaian, and that will be valid. I hope people get it now. The last one, men are lazy. Let's use Mansa. No, we can use Kofi. Mansa is not lazy. Mansa is not lazy. Mansa is not lazy. Okay, it's not because of the name Mansa. It is because of the meaning, the logic of the reasoning, eh, the pattern. It's not because of the name. I could have put Kofi there. Nothing would change. Men are lazy. Kofi is not lazy. The conclusion will have to be there for Kofi is not a man. And it will still be valid, deductively valid. Which one? Modus tollen. Now, there comes the tricky one. Using universal negations to do modus tollen. See the problem? Because already you are going to introduce not, not. And the thing is coming with some not already. Then the thing has become confusion. But, uh, but if you are... Uh, you are, you are particular about details. Yes. You will still get it done. Just like the way you button your shirt. Ladies, see how you do the makeup, the line, the left one. I want to make sure it is well seated and it's, it's, and its counterpart on the right is also aligned properly. People are very particular about their facial details. Brothers, when they do the lalas for you, when they, oh, hey, damn, madam. Hey, madam, I'm <laughs> sorry. Hey, hey, madam. Hey, hey, madam. 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 <laughs> It'd be like the left one be larger than the right one. How do you see it? You are hey, madam. When it comes to modus tollens, now it. Do it. We'll do it together. Okay. Calmly, steadily, but we'll go to. So let's look at uh, inversal negations with tollens. No mangoes are cut. Remember that we said that statement is another way of saying if X is a mango then X is not a cat. We have said it originally, that's what it means. So if you want to do two lengths, take your time and write it down. And then I'll call someone to tell me that. No mangoes are cats. Let's use X. What should be the next premise for modus two lengths? No mangoes are cats. The friend who called my name, talk. Because your 13 friends who put their hands. X, mm -hmm. X is a cat. Hey. Very good. Yeah. Therefore, X cut. X is not the, the brother talk so that you yourselves don't get confused. Let's hear the brother out and check it with your answer. So no mangoes are cut. Our X. brother said X is a cut. Therefore, therefore X is not a mango. Well done. That's very correct. It's Moodle stolen. What did he do? He just brought the consequent first, negated. Then he concluded with the antecedent. Also, what negated? That's all. So the consequent was originally negative. No mangoes are cats. Just means if X is a mango, then S is not a cat. So if I bring S is not a cat down and negate it, it will become S is a cat. That's what he said. Then the antecedent is what X is a mango. If I bring that statement down, negated, it, it becomes S is not a mango. That's what your friend did. Excellent. Well done. I need someone else to do. No cat is a dog. 
when we do one or two, then now uh, the rest is for you to practice. Madam, X is a dog. Oh, bra, we are doing a U. Ah, yes, I'm bow. You are right. S is a yeah, dog. Yeah, X is a dog. X is not a cat. <laughs> X, is not a cat. Well X is not a cat. Well done. That is it. Now, let me give you an examinable question. Oh. Yes, don't underestimate a crocodile. <laughs> so, right. If you do not have a passport, write it quickly. If you do not have a passport, have a passport, you can still travel. You can still travel. See how the question is. Now, I want you to develop a modus stolen validation. If you do not have a passport, you can still travel. Kofi, use Kofi. If you do not have a passport, you can still travel. Who is Dan? Hello. Yes. Go ahead, sir. Before people say, Madam, which one? Okay. The statement is if you do not have a passport, you can still travel. Oh, someone said, Madam, I thought you were going to answer for me. Modus uh, stolen valid argument. Let's use the name Kofi for uniformity. Okay. Mm. If you do not have a passport, you can still travel. Anybody ready? 17 hands up. Madam. Oh, God, Madam. God. Madam. I don't want only one person to answer. Kofi doesn't have. Madam. 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 Let me take the lady. My, my gentleman, please, everybody keep quiet. Let me take my lady that. Oh. Hey, I will knock you in the spirit. Let the sister talk, please. <laughs> <laughs> sister talk. If you do not have oh, a Madam. passport. Oh, Madam. Don't worry, Hey, Daya. Please, please, let, let her be, please. Yes, go ahead, Auntie. Kofi can still travel. Again, eh? the main premise if you do not have a passport, you can still travel. Okay, if Kofi can still travel, don't bring an if again. Okay, let, let's work this way steadily and surely. Okay, so what is the antecedent of this statement? Kofi can still travel. Oh, I want the antecedent. Antecedent, not at the end. You don't have a passport. Please be patient. We do not have a passport. Very good. So the antecedent is you do not have a passport. We don't include the if. The if is like a pointer. Okay, so the antecedent is take your time, everyone. Antecedent is you do not have a passport. So antecedent. Okay, write it on the top of it. Your, on your note pad. Then consequence is what, please? You can still travel. You can, you can still travel. travel. That is the consequence, just as it was you given can to still travel. Well done. Now we want to expand it into an argument. What we have is just a statement standing there. We want to open it out to read as a full argument, as a valid deductive argument. And we are specifying the type of validity we want. A, a modus tollens. We know the pattern for modus tollens. What does modus tollens say? Negate the consequence. The right after your premise. Yeah. So now that we know our consequence, what should we say next? After we say, if you do not have a passport, you can still travel. What should I say next? Coffee cannot still travel. You, you can, can no longer travel. travel. You Therefore, no longer travel. travel. You do not have yeah. a Therefore, Coffee doesn't have a Kofi has a passport. Yes, Kofi has a passport. Kofi can no longer have a passport. Okay, let me mute at all and take it. Now, what is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an interactive session. This is not a lecture. Okay, that's why I deleted your friend that commented on the channel there. I understand the concern he was putting across. The student, if you kept quiet, then we'll hear. But if I want it to be a purely recorded lecture, uninterrupted, I can do that. Look at the rest of the slides there. Uh, excuse me, the lecture videos. There. They are purely lecture videos, uninterrupted. This one is an interactive session. We can't come and run a monologue. Just that it is important that you also comport yourselves so that you, you will still, we will still have fun. We will still be, you know, less, uh, you know, tensed up and still learn, otherwise the substance is lost. So our friend said, if you do not have a passport, you can still travel. 
That's a conditional statement. The consequence is you can still travel. So if I want to do modus stolen, I say what? You cannot still travel. Okay? You cannot, I'm negating that part. You can't travel. You can't still travel. Therefore, what? Therefore, you have a passport. A passport. The reason why some people were struggling to conclude that way is that I say and pass. It's like it doesn't make sense. What are they saying? It doesn't have to make sense. All teachers are churches. Always remember that. Dr. Okay. Mao. They shot yourself. You shot yourself. Yeah. I can say all fruits are fish. All fish are women. It has to follow that all fruits are women. And they're all white. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and it's not me. Maybe I someone. It's the logic of it we are interested in. Okay. So I say if you do not have a passport, you can still travel. Next premise. Okay. You cannot still travel. Therefore, you have a passport. Modus to That's why I say it's an examinable kind of question. It is testing your ability to just obey simple obedience. Do not touch the food. Uh, no, do not eat from the food. Period. That's the instruction. Don't try and rationalize why the guy said that to the, the almighty God. Eh? Don't try. You, you don't really need to yes, Auntie Adwa. <laughs> Madam, please, why did you negate the antecedents for it to become you can have a you have a passport? Okay, okay hold on. When I say men lie, uh, men are lazy. Do you remember a men are lazy example? Yes, please. Okay, let's do tolerance with men are lazy. Use Kofi. What will you say next? Kofi is not lazy. Therefore, Kofi is a man. Ah, is that what we said? Kofi is not lazy. <laughs> Aha. Uh -huh. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Men are lazy. That was the starting point. Stolen. And we said, uh -huh. then we said, Kofi is not lazy. We brought the second one first, not. Then we concluded, therefore, Kofi is not Kofi, a man. A man. Okay. Thank but you very much. Oh, don't worry. What was nearly confusing is this one. Where we use a universal negation. Remember, when we said no man is perfect, for example, no man is perfect. If, when we open that out, it will be if X is a man, then X is not perfect. So if X is a man, then X is not perfect. That only shows you now what? Your antecedent and consequent. Then you can now expand that into an argument valid by modus stolen. How do you do that? We will say Kofi is perfect. Sister, follow me by because the original says Kofi is not perfect. The consequence eh? is not perfect. So if we want to develop that, we'll say Kofi is perfect. That would be a negation of the consequence. Kofi is perfect. Therefore, Sister, what should be the conclusion? Kofi is not a man. Very good. So this Kofi is not a man. It's not anything new we have done. We are just negating the original. Right. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Oh, okay. It will help a lot of people in bad generation. Go and go and see the sister. You can't call Yeah, you are going to do an item. Eh? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't mind me. Oh, we can call her. Oh, yeah. you, 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 I know you can come. We have calling powers. Let's finish for the day. Madam, okay. please, uh, passport and seeking. Yes, yes. So the transport one. The, the, if I, I wanted you to do, I said, where is it? Uh -huh. If you do not have a passport, see how I said it? There are negations inside. If you do not have a passport, you can still travel. So the original statement I'm giving you has an antecedent that is negative and a consequence that is positive. Okay. If you want to do modus stolen, just negate the consequent first before you go and negate the antecedent. The reason will be valid. So we say if you do not have a passport, you can still tra travel. You cannot travel is the next premise. Therefore, you have a passport. That's valid. Modus stolen. Okay. If I wanted to do modus stolen, you need to do that. Yes, I'll bring more. Let it sink in. You see how I'm teaching slowly. I think I don't even have anything else to do. It's intentional so that you grab it. When you grab it, the concept, the rest follows by itself. Another example. If you do not study, you will not pass. If 
you do not study, you will not pass. I want ponens first. Let's use Ama. Anybody? Madam, you said ponens. You will not pass. Let's use Ama. Modus ponens. Ama does not study. Okay. Therefore, Ama, Ama does not study. Ama Therefore, will not pass. Very good. You see that these notes, we didn't introduce them. They were given. We just wrote the antecedent first, affirmed the antecedent, and then we negated, eh, 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 we concluded by affirming what the consequent. So it's modus ponens, and you are correct. Very good. Now, if we wanted to do modus tollens of this reasoning, starting from if you do not study, you will not pass. Use Kofi. <clears throat> Kofi will pass. Kofi will pass. Kofi will pass. Kofi will pass. Therefore, Kofi will pass. 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 So it can be Kofi will pass. Therefore, Kofi is steady. Kofi is passing. Therefore, Kofi is steady. Kofi shall pass. Therefore, Kofi. You see, we don't care the tenses. It is the logic we are looking at. So the not is cancelled out and you do the consequent first then you conclude with the antecedent that is the, the real issue so kofi passed therefore it means kofi studied modus solis can you see that we've been madam, yes, madam we have. you see that the please go over the antecedent? madam please go over the opponents again for the opponents the point is that yeah. the original statement said, if you do not study, you will not pass. That's the original statement. Okay. Ponens just brings the antecedent first and concludes with the consequence, just as it was given. So you don't do any real work. If you do not study, then you will not pass. Next one. Okay. Kofi did not study. Okay. Therefore, Thank you. Kofi will not pass. Uh -huh. yeah. What about this very tricky one? I like the tricky ones where I give you one hand being negative, the other hand being positive. And I have yes, to we like it too. Yes, so let's do that one quickly. If yeah, you do not take care, guys, keep quiet and listen. If you do not take care, I'll slap you. If you do, if you do not take care, care. Hey, madam, hey, madam. <laughs> you do not take care, I, I, I will, will slap you. I will not I slap you. you. Madam will take not care. slap you. Me, if I take care, I will not slap you if you take care. Oh, okay. write that thing down. I don't like this uh, extemporaneous kind of thing. You can't do that with this cutting. Kind of mature a little in it before. Eh? Write that thing down or you know, do some skirmishes before you come with an answer. I did not slap you. Therefore, I did not slap you. Therefore, you took care. Therefore, we took care. Therefore, you, you took, took care. Take care. Mm. We took care, yes. Or oh, you take care. Into, so is this for modus This is tolerance. That's why we Therefore, take care. Madam, I'm confused. I will not slap you. You should be asking if you are following steady, okay? Therefore, take care. Yes. For slapping. Therefore, you take care. Therefore, you took care. The statement, yeah, the, the yeah, expressions yeah. you are dealing with must be statements. Okay, if you say, therefore, take care. Take care is imperative. It's instructive. Okay, but therefore, you took care. You took uh -huh. care. Mm -hmm. So, if you do not take care, I'll slap you. I want, a, you know, expressions that we, we will use in everyday life. Oh, hey, I remember what I have a question. Uh, Just a minute, so oh, okay. person, if you are not careful, I'll slap something like that. So the person is, is a conditional statement. If you do not take care, I'll slap you. If you want to be an argument valid by modus tollens, I will not slap you. The consequent is coming in first, but negated. I will not slap you. Therefore, you did take care or you took care. Full stop. That's modus tollens. Yes. Uh, yes, let me take my lady's question. My, my sister, ask your question. Uh, if you do not take care, I will slap you. You might make it right now. That's a conditional statement. Yes, madam. Please, um, 
You were like, it's, uh, <laughs> so I'm saying that it, you could use a uh, past tense, present tense, what have you. It won't change the meaning. If you had said, I will not slap you, therefore you did not take care. It's still valid. Modus tollens. Someone will say, I did not slap you. Instead of saying, I will not slap you, the person will say, I did not slap you, as if it's in the past. Okay. Therefore, you did take care. It's still valid. So we are not looking at the tenses. If you study, then you pass. You have studied, therefore you pass. It's valid. Someone will say, okay. uh, someone will say, if you study, then you pass. Uh, you, you are studying, therefore you are passing. It's still correct. It's the logic we are interested in, not the, uh, not the past tense or present tense. Hmm. Now it's twelve twenty by my time, I think. And so twelve twenty. Yo, okay. Now the disjunctive syllogism. Oh, folks, please, please, okay. Madam, please, please hear Yes, my lady asked the question Madam, on hypothetical class. Yeah, Madam, I can I hear you. Oh, sir, you continue. Yeah. Uh, the sister with the hypothetical syllogism is interesting. I'll address Madam. it shortly. Go ahead, my lady. I will not slap you. Therefore, you took care. Yes, so, it's correct. Um, yeah, so the there the yes. can you also say I will not slap you if you take care. If you bring another if it's still a conditional statement. Oh okay. We are doing so, arguments. Yeah. So revise the slide on argument. Okay. Two okay. premises leading to a conclusion. In conclusion indicator words are therefore, so, hence, thus, as a result, consequently, words like that. Okay. If it's a premise indicator. Madam question. More is a question. The sister asked about hypothetical syllogism. My sister, so, yes. The third reasoning pattern, which is straightforward, that one is the easiest because it deals with universal statements from start to finish. Premises are all universal. Mm. Conclusion is also universal. And you know that if I say universal, I also mean what? Conditional. Yeah, now, you know that uh, uh, say, universal statements are also what? Conditional statements. It's just another way of saying conditional. Okay. If you study, then you will pass. And if you pass, then I'll take you abroad. It means, therefore, that if you study, then I'll take you abroad. Okay, <laughs> if it is a mango, then it is a fruit. And if it is a fruit, the second premise, if it is a fruit, it's on a then tree. it is edible. Therefore, if it is a mango, then it is edible. That is also uh, hypothetical uh, syllogism. Okay, so on the screen now, if you can see my screen still, my sister who has a question on hypothetical syllogism, see what is happening there. All mangoes are fruits and all fruits are edible. edible. Then it has to follow that what all mangoes from the starting point what are edible. The common factor is fruit. You cross fruits out because you see fruit as a consequent and still also as an antecedent in the premises. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So it can cancel itself out. It is the consequent yeah. here and also the antecedent here. Therefore, you can conclude all mangoes are what edible. That is the valid part. What you shouldn't say though, Sister Joa. And I think that was the question. Uh, so for you to say all mangoes are fruits. Okay, then you leave the fruits there and you come and say all bananas are also fruits. Therefore, we should conclude that all mangoes are bananas. That is not right. Uh, uh, because the fruit in both instances are what consequent. If you want it to be a valid hypothetical syllogism, then that common factor must be an antecedent in one of the statements and a consequent in the other. Then it means that when you call antecedent, it is coming. When you call consequent, that same statement is coming. They have to cross it out. So, for example, all A's are B's. The correct one says all A's are B's. This thing is an A. Then it means that what? Oh, excuse me. All A's are B's. All B's are C's. Mm. Then you can say, therefore, all A's are C's. That is valid. Why? I started by saying all A's are B's. So here the B is what? A consequent. Then look at the next premise. The next premise says all B's 
Ah, and see, see. something else sees. Uh -huh. So now the B, which was a consequence in the first premise, is now an antecedent in the second premise. It's just that he's, it is playing, trying to play the system. When you call the women, then B has come. When you call the men, B has come. We, we throw them out. Uh -huh. yes. That's the problem. So all A's are B's. All B's are themselves C's. Then it creates a Z. Then we can say, therefore, that all A's are C's. Sister, I don't know if you are still around. That is hypothetical syllogism. And where yes, it is yes. two parallel lines, uh -huh. where it is just one, a two parallel lines, so all A's are B's. You leave the B there and come and say all A's are also B's. Therefore, we should conclude that all A's are C's. We say that is not, I mean, if you say all pastors go to the bar and all drunkards also go to the bar, therefore all pastors are drunk. It doesn't follow. Oh, not the oh, meaning no. of pastor and drunkard. It's the pattern of reasoning. All doctors wear suits and all lawyers wear suits. Therefore, all doctors are lawyers. That's a fallacy. It's a false hypothetical syllogism. Okay. But if I say all doctors wear suits, see, then the next premise says, and all who wear suits are lawyers, then I'll be obliged to accept that all doctors are lawyers. Did you see the difference? I said all doctors wear suits. Wearing suit is a consequent here. Then the next premise says, all who wear suits are lawyers. Then I will have to necessarily conclude that all doctors are lawyers because exactly. there's a common factor uh -huh, that crosses out. That is hypothetical technologies. Why? I hope you are able to work with that. Then the cheapest of them all is the disjunctive syllogism. Even if you are asleep, hey. do it. Mm. Either A or B. Then I tell you, not A. What would be the answer? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. It will have to be B. I, I set an exam question for you. That is it true or false? Then in the question, in the premises, take note. The negation is happening in the premises, not in the conclusion. Okay. I asked you true or false. So I said the options are either true or false. Then I tell you or in false. addition. Uh -huh, I tell you in addition. In the question that but the answer is not true. <laughs> what am I telling you? False. And I'm telling you that the answer is so false. false. So A or B, exactly. a negation of one of the alternatives will lead to the other one. That's disjunctive synopsis. Simple. It's from the disjunction. The main connective is called disjunction, either or. That is why we call it disjunctive synopsis. So some clues to help you when you are revising. This one, we did it last week. Today, you are yeah, experts. Yes. What is on your screen now is you are experts on affirming the consequent fallacy. You know it now. Experts by group 14 and College of Health Science schools. And yeah, yeah. Okay, look on the screen now. This one is denying. See, see what is happening. After seeing all X's are Y, see what the person is doing. This thing is not an X. Negating the antecedent. We don't do that. So you want to say, therefore, it is not a Y. It's not valid. Okay, that's why it's a formal fallacy. You know why it's formal. Okay. See the false hypothetical syllogism, my dear sister. You said all X's are Y's. Then you hey. leave the Y there. See, you have left the Y. Then we come and say all Z's are Y's. In both instances, Y is a consequence. So you can't therefore conclude all axes as Z. That is not a correct hypothetical syllogism. It's a false one. Okay. Very good. Now see, these are just to a pictorial uh, uh, something for you to enjoy. And then you, God will next week, we will be focusing heavily on our what on our unit seven, which you need also for what the I. You need unit one, two, three, five, six, and seven. The unit one, two, three, you will see that you need them to understand the unit six, seven, and five. Okay, implicit, explicit, statement, value judgment, not a, you know, prescriptive versus factual. Those ones are all ingredients, raw material that will help you to understand and grab the concept of the normative versus the empirical in unit five, for example. The and then the others that you see. So you have to focus heavily on what your unit six and seven, because they are the content proper, the raw materials that, of course, when you review factual statement and how it is different from value judgment, it will help you to know why certain laws are normative and others are empirical, and why certain debates are 
based on essentially contestable text and why so you see that so you don't expect that we are going to i'm going to set questions like uh, uh, which of the police is an interrogative video yeah. university yeah, like, yeah, we, won't, we won't ask you that because you it will be it will not be worth your okay which i will ask you questions that you can easily do because you have engaged the content, not questions that will make it look as if it didn't come and learn anything. Oh, Thank uh, you, Adam. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> keep that in mind. That's why I keep stressing. Learn the unit six and seven, substantive unit five. Then the first earlier units are the condo, cassava, do what have you that I bought from the market to come and prepare the banco and the oko stew. So you need the banco and the, and the condo, the okro, pepper, water. But I cannot put pepper only on it. I need the banco. With the raw condo and cassava, you put on your table. So the units one, two, three, there. I give you the raw materials. <laughs> okay. Now I, I take this. So that is Sorry. Yeah, I'll take questions. We are done. So no, I have a question. I will take all your questions. I will give you some few minutes of my time. You don't have any questions. Come on. If you have to go, you are so done. Don't That's worry about right. getting worried. Next week, God will be engaged. Let me take Madam's questions now. Madam, okay. please. Yes, please go ahead. Can I find the comments for the, the questions you gave? And the first one is if you do not take care, I will slap you. Is yes, for comments. If you do not take you, care, you are almost Oh, my brother, why why do you want to bully us? If you do not take care, <laughs> is that of understanding? I think it's a minute. Eh? Let me write it down for you. If you do not take care, I will slap you. Right. Uh, you want the opponent? The opponent is you, you can't bring the if again. You see that when you are oh, sorry. You're open the like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, so you just bring the statement itself. We go ahead. Okay. Um. You do not take care. Therefore, <laughs> I will not slap you. If it's ponens, you don't bring the knot, the second knot. You just repeat the original statement, you know, the original antecedent and consequence as it was given to you. Okay. So our original statement said, if you do not take care, I will slap you. Ponens will say what? You do not take care. Or if you like, you didn't take care. Therefore, Madam, question. I will slap you, yes, and that will be valid. So you have to just pick the answer. Do you have a lady at all? I didn't see why you didn't see that eyes. My lady, don't worry, just go ahead. I can hear you, so go ahead. Are you saying that because the antecedent was already negated? That's why. Yes, please. Yes, please. 